Dave Rumahe, if it is she, Erin Kassan, all the shinish. Welcome. This is the sixth talk uh, in on a path of knowledge, and we're talking today about balance. <laughs> In the chat, I'm going to say that the form is on frequencies, is pitch, is marching. We were talking last, in the last talk about pitch and frequencies and uh, sound and how different cultures hear it first and reproduce it, if you like. And obviously, that's all to do with perspective, something that we were talking about a week before that. Um, today, I'd like to talk about balance. In the field of creativity, everyone is, has creativity and it's awakened to one extent or another in each person. Lots of people spend all their energy in the physical presence, uh, building or making things or doing something or other. Um, and other people then put all their energy into the creative to the detriment of the first energy. Uh, or they might put their, all their energy into the, crea into the spiritual to the de detriment of creative or physical. The ideal is a balance between the three. So in the creative, when people say that they are composing a new tune or painting a painting, what I mean is uh, that they are uh, using some of their creative energy. It does not make a great painter or a great composer or such out of a person because they say they are. And why I say this is because in this day and era, it has become the fashion for people to call themselves a composer or a painter or a thing like that um, without actually realising that the title belongs to something a little bit more serious or a bit more finished, if you like. A real painter usually is very different to somebody who paints. Um, I, I'm somebody who paints, I paint paintings, but I paint them because ideas come into my head and sometimes the only way to get them out of my head is to actually make a physical reality of them. But the paintings are not good paintings. Everything has to have balance, you know. Balance means that it's, it's either, that, it, that it, it, it has equal, it has shape and balance on each side. You know, you can't, it has to, it have to, has to be balanced. That's true whether it's a bridge you're building over a river, or whether it's a piece of music, or whether it's a piece of, of, of art. There, there are paintings, for example, there's a painting there of a friend of, of mine, Marie Simmons Gooding. And all that painting is, is, fills the canvas and all of it has an important piece. You notice that the top, it's a day in the bog or turf and the banks of turf. You notice that the top pieces of the banks are cut off. That's only because they're not necessary to the painting. In the same way, there's another painting over here, a friend of mine, um, Hank Heidebeck from Holland. And in this, you notice the same way that it's kind of evenly balanced and the, the, the darkness around it is kind of to frame it really. Whereas if you look at the painting beside it, which is one of my own, it's very badly executed. And that's all about an atmosphere uh, that I was trying to remember of a dinner party in the house here where the thing that I took note of was, or that I felt was the books in the background, all the shelves of books in the background. But that's only because they were in my imagination as a painting that's completely lopsided and I should get a big scissors and cut, cut a huge chunk of it out and that would actually be the painting. So, in the same way with a piece of music. You can write a piece of music, uh, compose a piece of music, anyone can, but usually it's just a heap of notes unless there's balance and structure in it. And that needs an apprenticeship to learn those skills. Uh, for example, in my case, my apprenticeship included four years in UCC as a music student, 
to get a music degree under Professor Fleischmann with people like Christopher Stembridge um, uh, and other people of, of Charles Lynch and people like that who thought he had an awful lot. All I know really in that level. And then I also was an apprentice for all my life to traditional musicians of, of who uh, I was lucky enough to meet and to be able to listen to and learn from directly and who were not afraid to criticise me and to uh, teach me things. Nowadays, that's not fashionable. People say they're a composer, nobody says tickety-boo to them. They just make a thing made of heaps of notes. So everything has to has, have balance. <laughs> Must be answered. Now, in, that's more difficult from one culture to another, depending on the structures that culture evolves. We spoke about this in relation to Western music uh, reflecting Western civilization. So that is vertical blocks. And everything having to be resolved by rules, rules and regulations. Whereas in our indigenous culture, everything's based around the tonal center. And there is a, a balance to be struck when you go like this, if you go up above or down below, you have to have a balance uh, in, in the overall piece. Uh, so it doesn't matter what culture you're from. If it's Shakuhachi from, from Japan, you, you have to spend a long, long apprenticeship learning the intonation of each note and the frequencies and value of each note before you even attempt to play it because there is supposed to be so much significance in other realms that we don't even hear or see in Western ears. Um, so each civilization evolves its own sound, its treatment of frequencies and so on, as we said, and its use of them. But it, it also uh, evolves uh, different structures and formats, all of which are by nature, law, natural law, internally balanced if done properly. So what I'm saying is you can't uh, grasp at something and say you are that thing unless you spend a little time and apprenticeship at learning it. Humility is very scarce today and it goes hand in hand with learning something. And that's what I'd like to make, the point I'd like to make today, that everything creative, the final product has to have balance and structure. And to be able to do that, you must know what balance and structure is first. So that's the next area of research for you personally, if you're following this path. We will talk about melodic structure the next day. Grumagov.